Our guest this week on Veterans Chronicles is Jim Lavelle. He is a veteran of the United States Navy, a survivor, a survivor of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, and he was also uh, very much present at, one of, at another major moment in American history, and that was Jack Ruby's shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald. We'll get to that a little bit later in our conversation. Mr. Lavelle, thank you very much for your time today. Oh, thank you. Let's start at the very beginning. Where were you born and raised? I was born down in uh, Red River County, that's uh, southeast of uh, D Dallas area, and uh, raised there until in my teens. And then my folks moved around quite a bit. We moved out to West Texas area, stayed two or three years, and then back to Red River County. So, when did you join the Navy? I, uh, I was in 1940. I signed up in 1939 after I got out of school, and uh, I, I missed the last year of my school in 37, 38. Uh, when I turned 17, I joined the Civilian Conservation Corps that uh, Roosevelt had started, and I spent a year out in New Mexico in that. And then I came back, and uh, what that was in 37, and I came back in 39, and went my last year of school and and then I uh, signed up for the Navy or put my name in. At that time, the, uh, they was having trouble getting enough uh, recruits to hold, uh, for a company to send through training. So I had to wait a while and uh, I, uh, I don't remember what month it was, well, it was in the early part of 1940. And when were you stationed at Pearl Harbor first? Well, you, uh, wasn't, I never was stationed there. We just went in and out of there because I was aboard ship. I first, uh, when I first went in, they, I was uh, uh, assigned to a destroyer, and we were a destroyer was assigned to a, one of the uh, aircraft carriers, and because they had two destroyers that escorted those carriers around, one on either side, uh, wherever they went, and. Uh, of course, our main, uh, the, the way we helped them at that time was, since the war wasn't on, when we'd go out to sea, the pilots would like to practice landing and uh, taking off and landing on that uh, flat top, and we would just cruise along beside them because sometimes uh, their tail hook would miss that chain, the uh, hook that they catch to slow up, stop them, and if they and, and quite often they would go over the side on one side or the other. And uh, our job was to, we stayed in pretty close to them if they went over the side. We had a a boat that was hung out over the side of the ship and it was, you could trip a trigger and it dropped that boat right into the water immediately. And uh, and they would, and the time that boat hit the water, the motor was already running and there was two men aboard it. And they would run to where they were uh, airplane landed and pick up the the, uh, the pilot. We never lost a pilot, but uh, we did lose a ship uh, or plane a couple times. But uh, uh, we were able to, we never did uh, lose a pilot. Well, that's fantastic. You, you mentioned obviously this was before the attack on Pearl Harbor, and we weren't at war. Did most people have the sense that eventually? you would be going to war, or did most people think it wouldn't happen? No, the, I'd say it's about uh, uh, May or June, probably, of uh, 1941, we went on a full alert, because we, everybody was saying we were going to go to war with Japan immediately, and uh, so it, uh, we would be on an alert for a week or two, and then it would die down, and then a little bit later, another uh, deal would come out and put us on an alert, and that that meant that we couldn't go ashore or anything else at, at, during that alert time. And but it, it got to the point that uh, uh, it was kind of like uh, the, that boy hollering wolf, uh, and it called, we, we, well, it's just another one of those deals. And uh, and actually, then when it actually did happen, they didn't have an alert, and so hmm. but it did did come along. Well, let's go to the morning of Sunday, December 7th. Uh, where were you, and, and how did you learn what was happening? Well, I was aboard ship, and uh, it happened just a few minutes before 8 o'clock, and 
I don't know, somebody, somebody had wrote down that it was uh, 758 or something like that. But I, I didn't know, I didn't look at the clock, so it didn't make any difference. But we had just, uh, they had just served breakfast on there and everybody was, and it's on a Sunday, they couldn't have picked a better day to do it because we get paid twice a uh, month and uh, the day before was our payday. So uh, everybody's getting ready to go and spend their 12 or 15 dollars that they got. I was getting 30 dollars a month at that time, and uh, of course I get 15 dollars of it at that deal. Uh, we was called ourselves rich on payday. It didn't last long, but then uh, that was, I'd say half the fleet was getting ready to go ashore uh, after that. I was planning on going later that day, but not then. And I, the, the shore boats didn't leave. You couldn't till eight o'clock. That's for earliest any of those ships could send out their boats, carrying the sailors over to the dock to, for them to catch a bus into town. And there was several of them uh, ready to go. <coughs> and, but uh, I've often thought that it would have been quite a uh, worse deal if they had just waited a few sec minutes longer because that bay, would, all those ships had the same deal. They didn't leave until 8 o'clock. So they'd had all these boats headed into the shore loaded with uh, sailors, our Marines, if they was on a ship that had carried Marines. And, uh, but uh, fortunately, it had just a few inches before they were left. Uh, and of course, everybody was able to man their battle stations. So where did you go as soon as you knew Mine was on, I was a loader on that uh, four-inch uh, four uh, gun that shot 30 miles. We've, if you got in a battle with other ships and things like that, that's what that was for. So I never fired a lot. It lo we loaded it and had it ready, but uh, you it was useless to fire at planes a half a mile up with that with a gun like that. It's, and. Uh, because if I had a fire fired it back in the direction where the planes were as from our ship, it would have landed somewhere in Honolulu over there. But so I never, I never, I never fired a shot. So I told him, I said, I can't claim any victory on uh, Pearl Harbor Day because I didn't fire anything. You were aboard the USS Whitney yeah. at that time. Where was it positioned? Uh, related to some it's of the other ships. In the, uh, I've always had problems with the directions on that, but I th in the northeast end of the, uh, the harbor. And uh, we, I'd say we was a good two miles away over there. But on the, on the, out on the sea or ocean or, or any water, bay of water, if you're a mile or two away, it looks like it's just a little ways over there. You, got, you have perfectly good view of it. So we had a, uh, a real good view of everything that was going on, but there was nothing we could do about it. We got order, all of the ships uh, were given orders, all the commanders were given orders, if anything happened, uh, to get their ships out of that harbor. That was, uh, and our captain had the same orders. And they were, after it broke out, he was, uh, those orders were reissued to the commanders of the ships. And we got that, but in our play, in our day, we had four destroyers tied up beside of us, and uh, they we, they had to get their ship moving and get unhooked and move and so forth, and it take a little time and all of that. And one of them had tore down all their guns, uh, and was going over and cleaning them up and doing I don't know what they're doing to them, working on them anyway. So they never got theirs into into firing at all. But the others that were hooked that was able to, they got their aircraft uh, manned and so forth. They, they had three inch and uh, two inch, uh, uh, or, or, the four, or, or the 50 caliber rather, they had the three inch aircraft and then the 50 caliber guns. And the ones that, that could get into action, they did, but uh, uh, one of them, of course, they couldn't because they had their guns stored in. And we got orders to move, but before we could, we have so much stuff uh, like acetylene barrels and stuff like this along uh, out on the deck to be used for the ship that tie up to us if they need it. And we have to get all those tied down before you move or get up station. So we weren't able to get get that in 
into uh, our deck people wasn't able to get that done and then finally they we got orders to stay put not to not to go but uh, we had clear view of all the other deals and uh, we a lot of the uh, uh, ships commanders got their ships moving some of the uh, destroyers and so forth had them going I don't I don't know what destroyer it was but there's there was one going out the channel and uh, with all guns blazing, but they also had a fire going on. On that, uh, they caught fire. They'd been hit, so they was on fire. But their fireman was working on that. <coughs> you see, that channel was so shallow uh, that if they sunk a ship in it, then uh, we could no other could go in and out. And uh, of course, the Japanese knew that too. They had been told that because they had good. Uh, uh, history on what what was going on and how and how to work against it and so in fact the uh, the commander of the uh, Nevada the battleship Nevada he uh, was he cranked up and got out but he was burning four and a half he had a fire going on both they had going on both ends and the fireman was fighting it and of course the other the other guns that was up around the neck deck up. They were firing, and, uh, but uh, the uh, Japanese saw that, uh, had that battleship going in that, and they they took after him because they wanted to sink him in that channel. Well, he was, he used his head. He's a smart deal. He turned that battleship and run it aground, and, uh, and as a result of that, they saved it and later on put it back into commission so, and running it. But he used his head, and that was a, a because he he realized what they were going to do if he got into that channel. So he just run it to ground. There's a lot of uh, heroic things took place that day by different uh, people and so forth. Uh, by one uh, I think one boats and mate uh, they were their ship was tied up to the harbor uh, docks, and they started backing. He had to get out and throw that. A rope off that had it anchored to the dock, and the ship started backing out, and he jumped into the sea, uh, jumped into the bay, and climbed up that anchor rope and got back on his ship. But it's certain there was a, a, a untold number of really brave things that was done by the sailors and Marines and the Army and so forth, and it's just innumerable. Mr. Lavelle, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back on Veterans Chronicles.